but we begin tonight with a look at the health effects of air pollution. The economic boom in North Carolina has led to more industry, more energy use, and more traffic. The ever-increasing number of cars and trucks spew out a mix of pollutants from their exhaust, some of which react to form ground-level ozone, a major component of smog. Health experts say ozone can cause permanent damage to the lungs and especially threatens the elderly and those with respiratory diseases, including the more than 130,000 North Carolina children with asthma. Dr. Tom Linden has more. 11-year-old Megan Foster flies down the track at York Elementary School in Raleigh. She's one of the fastest kids in her grade. But when the ozone count goes up in Wake County, Megan can't run. My lungs get tight, and I start wheezing, and I can't breathe. Like 10 million children in the U.S., Megan Foster has asthma, a chronic condition in which her airways tighten sometimes nearly suffocating her. In 1996, Megan made several visits to the hospital. Her mother remembers one in particular. They kept telling me they're working on Megan, they're trying to get her going again, they're working on her. And I just, I remember saying, I just want to see her, I just want to see her, and they says, no, let's pray. You're sitting there in ICU and you don't know whether your daughter or your child is gonna be all right. And I'm looking at this child, and I'm, I mean, tubes, everything the whole nine yards and I'm looking I said this is not my kid I don't even know who this child is it didn't even look like my child but um that gave me some time to really sit down and think this is a serious condition you could lose her what are you gonna do deep breath in out again as a child with asthma Megan is very sensitive to air pollution the State Department of Health and Human Services says North Carolina ranks fifth in the nation for unhealthy ozone levels. In the three years from 1997 to 99, ozone levels in the triangle exceeded federal government standards 102 times, according to a report by the State Department of Environment and Natural Resources. North Carolina is home to five of the 70 counties in the U.S. with the greatest ozone pollution. That's bad news for our state's children, say air pollution experts. They breathe more per pound of body weight than, than adults do, so on ozone action days, they're, they're probably more affected. They also tend to be outside playing and breathing more often than adults are. Here's an air passage from a normal lung. Pollutants from cars lead to ozone in the air. The ozone then triggers a complex allergic reaction in the lungs that cause these air passages to narrow, making it difficult for asthmatic children like Megan Foster to breathe. Let me, let me walk you out the door. Dr. David Peden takes care of Megan. He's also associate director for the Center for Environmental Medicine and Lung Biology at UNC Chapel Hill. We believe that ozone has really picked up in the triangle over the past four or five years, and I think that's probably directly related to, to our booming economy, the fact that we have a lot of people moving to the triangle, and they all bring their cars with them. And out of their cars and trucks come a brew of chemical compounds that lead to ozone and other air pollutants, including tiny particles that irritate the lungs. Get ready, start. In an experimental air chamber at the Environmental Protection Agency lab in Chapel Hill, scientists studied the effects of breathing polluted air on healthy adults. As the student volunteer exercises, air full of pollution particles enters the chamber. A lab technician monitors the health effects. We might go anywhere from very clean air, cleaner than we've got outside, to, for example, Los Angeles on a bad day. And we begin to see effects in our chambers at levels uh, that are consistent with what we're now seeing in the triangle. In 1993, to escape the smog of Southern California and preserve her daughter's health, Ina Foster moved Megan from San Diego to Raleigh. A year earlier, San Diego had 66 days that exceeded federal ozone standards, according to the California Air Resources Board. In 1992, Raleigh broke the standard only four times. But in the last eight years, air quality in the triangle has worsened. In 1999, air quality in San Diego was far better than it had been when the Fosters moved with only 16 days exceeding national ozone standards compared to 29 in the triangle. 
all in all, I think um, I may have made a bad choice as far as moving her from California to here. Um, at least there are a lot of measures in place in California that would control the emissions. It's not only cars and trucks that pollute the air, it's also power plants and other industries, say environmental experts. In North Carolina each year, we have uh, 240,000 cases of asthma. Uh, asthma rates in children is skyrocketing. If we are able to reduce our emissions from power plants by 80%, we will reduce the asthma rates dramatically. Uh, the benefits are also in the form of, of tourism and, and quality of life. Right now we're below the 24-hour uh, below the 24-hour exceedance level in Charlotte, but we could be heading there. But we're already there in, in Winston. -Sunday. Yes. At the Division of Air Quality, staff deal with an emerging ozone alert. Depending on the level of pollutants, state officials can call for code orange, red, or purple days, all of which carry health warnings. For Megan Foster, every code orange or code red is a threat, as her nurse Debbie Kirkland explains. In the summer, when it's hot, because that's when you're affected by ozone, we do see, um, we get a lot of calls from the office, children wheezing. Uh, we often tell them not to go out in the heat of the day when it's the hottest, you know, to go out earlier in the morning, uh, later in the evening. The good news is that asthma generally improves as children get older. By inhaling medication every morning and taking a number of pills every day, Megan is helping to control her asthma. What Megan Foster can't control is the quality of the air she breathes. I felt bad at times because here it was, a child that wants to go out and play with their friends, but they have to stay inside a house. And, and it wasn't fair, but I had to explain to her that I know it's not fair, but there's nothing I can do about it. Now, the solution to the problem of air pollution will take a lot of planning from government, industry, and individuals. Experts say we need to decide how much we're willing to pay and whether we're willing to change our lifestyles and energy use to ensure the air we breathe is clean.